Welcome back to our series. Now, in the first episode, we discussed why small farmers need data to improve their agriculture. Now we're going to dive deeper into how Pratik and his team at Impact are tackling this challenge with a scalable and affordable IoT solution. From blockchain for traceability to mesh static for reliable connectivity, let's explore how IoT is shaping the future of farming. So in terms of the solution I have in mind, it's trying to get as close as possible to install and forget device. That means power supply from the sun with a battery that gets charged, which then runs the sensor itself and the microcontroller controls how many times it has to read sensor from underground and then transfer the data over LoRaWAN and MeshTastic for reliability, the mesh design. Farming is already a tough job. Farmers don't have the time or expertise to set up complex IoT systems. Pratik wants a solution that is easy to install and easy to forget. Something reliable, affordable and effective. How do you ensure connectivity across farms that are not as anywhere near perfect shape or size? Let's hear from Pratik himself. So the topology of the network, I wish every farm in the world looked like farm number one on the left. It's all perfect, like rectangular or square. Then you know how far everything is. But most farms in the world look like farm two. It's all sorts of funny shapes. So the X's are the sensors and the base stations are the little towers around. So how do we get the data from a sensor uh, number, let's say in the one in the middle, and then transfer that to the base station? This is actually a distance problem. So Laura, there are trees in the way, there's uh, rocks and boulders in the way, and maybe be a house in the way. There may be a windmill in the way, we don't know. Laura itself is line of sight. If it's clear, it goes far. However, it can't go beyond, you know, it has, you can only do certain blockages in the field of view before it stops. Uh, you lose the signal. Most farms aren't just flat open fields. There are trees, rocks and buildings in the way. Laura works best with a clear line of sight, but in real life, farms need a smart way for transmitting data. That's where mesh static comes in. Let's listen to Pratik explain how mesh networking makes IoT farm friendly. So that's when we arrived at the idea of using mesh tastic. We said, look, let's make a mesh in the farm that lets the nodes talk to each other. And then there's hopping. This sensor sends a message to its friends, its neighbors, and that passes the message on and that reaches the base station. So you have a much more reliable communication that gets over the line of sight problem. By using a mesh network, sensors don't need a direct line of sight to the base station. Instead, they communicate with each other and hop the message across the farm, ensuring that data always gets through. But building such a system requires careful cost considerations. Let's hear from Pratik on why affordability is the key. It's a global problem we're trying to solve, starting with one country or two countries. It has to be low cost because farmers can't actually afford to pay a lot of money for sensors. They don't trust these things. So somebody has to install them, they get the proof it works, then they will start using it. So That's right. we need to reduce the cost as much as possible. Farmers are hesitant to invest in new technology unless they see proof that it works. That's why IoT solutions must be affordable, reliable, and easy to install. But IoT farming isn't just about soil sensors. It includes irrigation monitoring, weather tracking, and so forth. So how can Pratik and other innovators build custom solutions without being hardware experts? Let's explore that next. When you deploy the farm, you also need to looking for other many different type of device on the farm. Yes. For example, you need irrigation and uh, yes. you need probably the temperature air quality monitoring. The core sensor is soil moisture, but also you need uh, another sensors like transmitting the temperature data, data and the environmental yeah. data to the cloud. If you want to connect a more mesh testing node, also mesh testing, they have the, the device row and also they have the repeater row and the, even the yeah, gateway so i think with this kind of you know so massive potential you can use for mesh testing we also recommend that you can look in for the west block solution and the west block is a modular ecosystem right you can pick any the connectivity core and also the sensors even in closure together soil data is just the beginning to build a truly smart farm you need iot solutions for irrigation weather, air quality, and so forth. But here's the challenge. Pratik isn't a hardware engineer. So how can innovators like him create easy and customizable IoT devices? That's where Mesh Static Designer comes in. This is the Mesh Static Designer. And mm -hmm. uh, so, the, you know, for West Block, they can do many different use cases. But Mesh Static is one kind of the target use case for IoT. Building IoT shouldn't be complicated. With Mesh Static Designer, 
users can visually select and configure all the right hardware for their needs without going into deep technical knowledge. But what's next? In our next episode, we'll see a live walkthrough from Ken Yu, CEO of Rack Wireless on how easily customizable an IoT devices are. Plus, Pratik will also share his vision on making IoT accessible to passionate innovators, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this episode insightful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us for more. In the next episode, we'll go hands-on with Meshtatic Designer. So, see you soon.